We share so much in common with some of our closest living ancestors. Bonobos, chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans in that order are classed as our closest living ancestors. But when did we diverge from our distant cousins? And what was the world like at the time? It's important to note, before we begin, that when I say the last common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees, I am including bonobos in that category, as they are part of the same genus as chimpanzees, called Pan, or collectively, Peninia. To begin with, based off genetic studies, archaeogeneticists put a rough estimate of 5 to 7 million years on the split between us and chimpanzees. We have very little fossil evidence to study, so it's currently very difficult to know what was going on in that crucial time period. But we do have some, and these small number of fossils help us understand the behaviour of apes at the time. Ardi, a fossilised skeleton belonging to Ardipithecus ramidus. Ardi lived 4.4 million years ago and is the most complete early hominin specimen, with most of the skull, teeth, pelvis, hands and feet, more complete than the famous Lucy. Ardi's skeleton was discovered in a region of Ethiopia called Armis in 1994 by a college student called Johannes Haile Selassie. Ardi lived roughly 1.2 million years after the last common ancestor and about 1 million years before Lucy. As we move closer towards this last common ancestor, you would expect fossils to show more prominent ape-like features, with early signs of development of those human features we see in us, and some of our extinct ancestors. And this is exactly what we see in Ardi. Although Ardi had more ape-like hands, feet and limbs, Ardi's pelvis gives a different perspective. The parts of Ardi's pelvis that were recovered included her left hip, her right ilium, and fragments of her distal sacrum, a shorter ilium and a curve in the lower spine were the characteristics gathered from these partial remains that indicate Ardi and the Ardipithecus ramida species had the ability to walk upright. The shift to bipedalism is only beginning to emerge in Ardi because there are characteristics in Ardi's pelvis that are both found in later hominids and characteristics that are found in extinct African apes. A characteristic that is found in Ardi and in all later hominids is a separate growth site for the anterior inferior iliac spine. A similar istial structure is a characteristic found in Ardi and in extinct African apes. This mixture of characteristics indicate that Ardi's bipedalism was an earlier version of bipedalism compared to later hominids like Lucy. Regardless of how ancestral Ardi's bipedalism was, these characteristics found in Ardi's pelvis show bipedalism was very well underway by 4.4 million years ago. Even with the ability for aboreal locomotion still present in the hands and limbs. Ardi's foot is a special area of interest when examining the evolution of bipedalism in early hominids, because all five toes do not line up. The foot of Ardi contains a big toe that is similar to chimpanzees. This toe is believed to have been used to aid in climbing trees. On the outside, Ardi's foot may look like it belongs with other apes. But on the inside, Ardi's foot contains a bone called the osperineum, which allows the bottom of the foot to be more rigid. The rigidness of the bottom of the foot was believed to allow Ardi to walk upright, and the other four toes that were aligned performed the toe-off action during bipedal motion. The combination of features found in Ardi and other members of his species capture a moment in time where these primates were beginning to leave the trees, spending longer periods of time on the ground. This variety of features is exactly what we're looking for. It highlights a shift in evolution where our ancestors slowly started to progress to bipedalism. So if we did in fact evolve from a species that was very similar to modern chimpanzees, then as we move further back in our evolutionary timeline, we would see more and more distinct chimp-like features. But that's not entirely true in Ardi's case. The fourth metacarpal is the bottom bone of our ring fingers that connects the top half of our finger to the hand. Here is a side-by-side -side image of a chimpanzee's fourth metacarpal and a human's. As you can see, they vary in size quite drastically, 
and this is for good reason. Although chimpanzees can walk on two legs for short periods of time, they primarily walk on their knuckles. Knuckle walking is prominent in all African apes. The metacarpal bone needs to be bigger and stronger because knuckle walking apes are putting all their weight on these bones while moving. The reason I bring this up is that when we look at Ardi's fourth metacarpal, you can see it is much smaller than the chimpanzees and more human-like. This has caused some paleoanthropologists to think that Ardi didn't directly evolve from a knuckle walker, which would mean, perhaps, that knuckle walking started to phase out when gorillas diverged from our evolutionary line 10 million years ago, and then maybe redeveloped once chimpanzees split from us. Very few fossil specimens on the chimpanzee side of the split have been found. The first fossil chimpanzee dated roughly 545,000 years ago, so it's very difficult for us to see the progression of evolution in chimpanzees. Or it could simply mean that there are a few more ancestors to discover before we reach our common ancestor that could show even more traces of knuckle walking. Who knows, our story at this time is so fuzzy. There are a lot of contradicting theories and beliefs that are all perfectly reasonable to believe with the current evidence presented. Leave your opinions in the comments below. Our species can be recognised by the result of four major evolutionary changes. Bipedalism, shorter jaws with smaller teeth, larger brains, and increasingly complex forms of technology. Fossil evidence, like Ardi, show that our ancestors became bipeds first, followed by changes to the teeth and jaws. It was only much later, roughly around the time of Homo erectus, that our larger brains and more complex technology set us apart. The earliest fossil, clearly in the human but not the chimpanzee lineage, appeared between 4.5 to 4 million years ago, with Australopithecus anamensis. Anamensis is the first known Australopithecus and is well documented in the fossil record for a hominin, and existed alongside Lucy species, Australopithecus afrinensis. Fossil studies of the wrist morphology of anamensis have suggested knuckle walking, showing some signs that we definitely evolved from a knuckle walking ancestor. The anamensis hand portrays robust phalanges and metacarpals, and long middle phalanges. These characteristics show that anamensis likely engaged in arboreal living, but were largely bipedal, although not in an identical way to Homo. We have fossils from the time period that the split supposedly happened. Sahelanthropus chadensis, which was discovered in northern Chad, is a species of homini that lived in Africa 7 million years ago, which is around the same time we are looking for. The fascinating thing about this species is that it is much alike to us, chimpanzees and gorillas. The brow ridge and front of the face is very gorilla-like, its skull is very chimpanzee-like, housing a similar sized brain. But the most amazing similarity is the hole at the bottom of the skull, which is positioned like you and I, which suggests that this species was quite upright, showing the same pattern that we have seen before in Anamensis and Arti. A life up in the trees, then coming down to the ground and moving on two legs. Through the pointing towards the point I mentioned previously, that knuckle walking may have evolved twice, once when we split from gorillas, and for a second time when we split from chimps. This is also supported by the fact that gorillas and chimps don't knuckle walk in the same way. Gorillas have an upright wrist posture, while chimps show an extended posture, which could be interpreted as evidence for separate evolution. This could mean that knuckle walking isn't a traditional ape-like trait, which to me, if true, leaves another question. Why did knuckle walking evolve? I really enjoyed covering this topic, and I find it absolutely fascinating that we may have never looked like chimpanzees. The human story is changing every year, with new fossils being excavated that could contradict yesterday's theory. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.